Hi, I'm Justin Teresi, and I cover consumer, industrials, and healthcare litigation and policy for Bloomberg Intelligence, the investment research arm of Bloomberg LP. Today, I want to take a few moments to highlight some of the important cases and proposed policy developments we're watching in 2024 and the way, the, and the way they'll impact some of the companies we're watching in these spaces. This video format is short and rather high level, but as always, please feel free to follow up with me if you have questions about anything I discuss. As shown on the slide, you can reach me by email at jtherec2 at bloomberg.net or contact me anytime by phone at 646-803-0942. Let's start with some of the cases and themes that have had great interest over the past year and that we continue to continue developing into 2024. Regarding buyers' roundup litigation, we're continuing to see activity on two fronts for the company. The first involving claims that ingredients in Roundup weed killer cause cancer, namely Hodgkin's lymphoma, and then also claims relate, related to PCB contamination. 2023 ends with a series of unfavorable verdicts for Bayer. After a previous winning streak in the year, the company lost five Roundup cases in a row, with verdicts ranging from a couple million dollars all the way through a $1.56 million verdict out of state court in Missouri which we believe will be reduced as excessive. At last count, about 45,000 state and federal cases remain for Bayer. They settled, after they settled about 109,000 claims for $9.4 billion in 2020. The main catalyst we're watching for 2024 is that we're awaiting an imminent ruling from the 11th Circuit panel on whether state claims pertaining to cancer are preempted by federal law. If the court says yes, that creates a split with the Ninth Circuit and could mean a SCOTUS review in the coming year, which could perhaps mean a future resolution of ongoing state claims in buyers' favor, if the high court sides with them there. If the Eleventh Circuit doesn't find claims preempted, we believe settlement pressure continues to increase with every negative verdict plaintiff's attorneys are feeling more emboldened. We then expected a global attempt to settle outstanding claims in the coming year. Moving forward to ongoing PFAS, or forever chemical litigation, we're continuing to keep all eyes on the federal PFAS MDL, or multi-district litigation, that's pending in South Carolina. While things are still developing, we continue to believe that settlements between PFAS manufacturers, such as 3M and DuPont, and the nation's public water authorities, will be approved in early 2024. On the personal injury front, a class of nearly every Ohio resident was decertified by a panel of the Sixth Circuit in December in a case seeking the creation of a science panel and medical monitoring for Ohio residents who had PFAS in their blood. Plaintiffs are seeking a review of that panel's decision by the whole Sixth Circuit and will likely see a decision on whether that review will be granted in the first half of 2024. As always, stay up to date on all PFAS litigation by visiting our PFAS litigation tracker, which is available on the terminal. Turning now to the EPA, but sticking with some environmental regulations, we think there are three proposed rules that will become final rules by the agency in early 2024. The first two relate to, of course, PFAS. The first adds forever chemicals to contaminants that are covered by CERCLA, the Federal Superfund Act. Cleanup costs associated with this rule are pegged at $22 billion by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce in a report. The second rule sets a very low maximum contaminant level, or MCL, for different PFAS chemicals. The EPA sees costs for this at about $770 million to $1.2 billion, but other analyses peg that cost at $2.5 to $3.2 billion annually simply to meet that standard. Still at EPA, but moving more toward the transportation sector, the EPA's also set new light vehicle emission standards that, according to some reports, will require two-thirds of new vehicles sold in the U.S. to be electric by model year 2032. It's no surprise that EV-focused automakers like Tesla and Rivian love the plan, but it's facing some opposition from traditional companies like GM and Ford, who are still developing much of their EV capabilities. The EPA is projecting this rule will increase costs per vehicle by an average of about $1,200 to $1,800 per unit. Sticking with environmental issues, a November lawsuit by New York Attorney General Letitia James is the first of its kind by a public entity against a consumer goods company using single-use plastics, in this case PepsiCo. The suit alleges that these companies are liable under a public nuisance theory for the pollution caused by the plastics that they produce because they know that not all plastics are easily recycled and don't warn consumers of this. 
It also alleges that companies fail to use more environmentally friendly packaging options that are available. It's likely that the Attorney General will beat a motion to dismiss in 2024 if the case stays in state court where it was filed, and we think it will because the case is tightly limited to New York claims and Pepsi's also a New York company. We think this case, while it's small on its own for damages, could be the catalyst for sizable amounts of future litigation against consumer goods manufacturers if it's successful in New York. And also on the transportation front, we're watching continuing developments in cases involving Norfolk Southern's liability for damages caused from the train derailment that occurred in East Palestine, Ohio last February. In 2024, it's unlikely that Norfolk Southern will succeed with its dismissal bids, but it could also keep third parties who, owned, who allegedly owned defective train cars in the cases and on the hook. We think a total cost in Norfolk Southern here could be $1.5 to $2 billion. And we're also watching a series of securities cases against Tesla, one in, including one over alleged misstatements by CEO Elon Musk on the timeline for deploying autopilot technology in cars, as well as another alleging market manipulation caused by Musk's statements on Dogecoin. We think the company likely beats both of these cases. So in summary, that's some of the things we're watching for the com coming year over at the Consumer Industrials and Healthcare Desk. Again, please don't hesitate to reach out if you want any more information on these cases or regulations or anything else I'm covering. With that, I'm Justin Teresi, wishing everyone